Hi, it's Michael from Men's Finest. And I've got a question for you. Are we entering no necktie era? Are we all gonna be right now wearing open collar shirts? No necktie whatsoever? I'd, I'd die to know your, your thoughts and your comments about that. So make sure you comment very quickly down below this video. Also, before that happens, make sure you click that subscribe button and that little bell for notification so you can see the videos as soon as I upload them. But now, let's dive into neckties and let's talk about them in some more details. British Members of Parliament no longer have to wear ties in the House of Commons. Does this finally spell the end? of an item of men's clothing that was once the rigor in the Western world? Well, it just seems wrong somehow. You know, MPs getting up and speaking the Commons uh, in the open necked shirt. This is an institution at the end of the day in which people still refer to each other as a right honorable gentleman. I give way to the Honourable Gentleman. This behaviour may offend traditionalists, I believe, and many MPs will no doubt continue to cling on to the comfort of the tie. You know, but, but definitely there is a slow decline, and I can see that as well, of this particular item in men's clothing in the West. Wearing a tie to work used to be a sign that you had reached a certain station in life, you know, certain status. Now for many British men, turning up to work in a tie will prompt someone to ask if they have an interview, you know, or if they, if they have to go to court or something. Only about a third of British office staff regularly wear a tie, according to some surveys. That's interesting. And I'm sure you no doubt heard of Dress Down Friday, that right now has become dressed down every day in many workplaces. Although people who deal with the public are usually still expected to do Thai every morning. You know, the Thai used to be a powerful signifier of social status. The regimental Thai, the club Thai, and all the above. The old school they used to have their own symbols and the old ties, uh, and it had got some status of belonging. You know, the, the subtle way of excluding those who did not belong to that area. It is a tradition that stretches back to Roman times, when soldiers who wear different colored neckwear would actually declare the membership to different groups. But in today's workplace power games, however, the man at the top is very often the one without a tie. You know the whole Silicon Valley, you've probably seen that, all the chief executives out there, you know, they, they, they wear chinos and casual shirts and no tie whatsoever. It's the, somehow a way to let everyone know that you're, you know, that you don't care, that you've got less, you know, less stiff rules, you're more relaxed. World leaders at G8 in Northern Ireland 2013 were told to wear smart casual for the first time, although most of them still wore suits. But world leaders in general right now dress smart casual for summits. Tyler's trend has even spread to the royal family. When Prince Harry met 91-year-old Ivor Anderson at military event last year, you know, the D-Day veteran cheekily asked him, where's, where's your bloody tie? There are, of course, many traditional institutions in Britain, uh, you know, such as Gentlemen's Club of Mayfair or some other gentlemen's clubs where you will not get through the door without a tie. Yet now, like the top hat used to be, maybe the tie time may finally be running out. But is it? Tie or a bow tie is always a, a, a big question of mine. Should I wear a tie? Should I wear a bow tie? Um, and I don't know. Please let me know in the comments below what you think uh, tie versus bow tie scenario. But one pet peeve of mine is if you decide to wear a tie, make sure it's nicely, snuggly, uh, tied. It's not loose uh, and it's sort of bigger. It needs to be tied like you, like you mean it. Let me show you. So when you pop your collar, there is two ways to wear a tie and to tie a tie. You can either tie it here, and many people do, 
I'm okay with that when uh, I've got a mirror, but if I haven't got a mirror, what do you do then? Well, you can try and somehow tie it here. No idea how does that look. Probably rubbish. Let's have a look. Ah, that wasn't actually that by, bad of a, of a tie. Have a look. And that was done without the mirror. I'm super impressed with myself. Mmm. The alternative to that is, of course, you can um, undo your tie. And then if you haven't got a mirror, I always try to tie that in, in the air, like. Because then I can see how long it is, and I can see if that's actually going to be fit for me. So if I know that that's the knot, then I know that that knot's going to look exactly like that on me. There you go. <laughs> the same knot, done in the air, put on me, it looks exactly the same, right? So I'm not too sure about the end of a Thai era, but I'm pretty sure if you decide to go open neck, never forget about a pocket square. And make sure that, that pocket square you're choosing is a nice big silk pocket square so you can actually um, do something with it, put it in your pocket. You've got different colors, depends on the color that you want to show. You know, have that ability, have that and flexibility with your pocket square. You can pinch it in the middle, you can do whatever else with it. Have it in your pocket and be awesome. Thank you so much for watching this very short video about the Thai and potential the end of the Thai era in the Western world. Please let me know in the comments below whether you think that we actually entering the end of the Thai era. Stay stylish. See you soon.